Hello, I'd like to talk about working sky clad, also known as ritual nudity. Um, there's been a lot of talk about consent in relation to working naked in a circle and a lot of people expressing why they really, really wouldn't want to do that. So I just wanted to say, to explain from a perspective of someone who loves working sky clad, why it's so great. Uh, and to look at some other reasons why people have um, advocated for it. So in the excellent chapter in Witches, Druids and King Arthur by Ronald Hutton, uh, entitled A Modest Look at Ritual Nudity, um, he suggests that um, there are some important factors in why working skyclad in a ritual space is attractive. Um, so he suggests that it's brought about to some extent by the alteration of consciousness caused by candlelight, incense and chanting. So there's the creation of an atmosphere where, which is conducive to feeling different than the everyday. Um, these, so these sensory stimuli show that something out of the ordinary is happening. And people have moved from their ordinary everyday consciousness to a space where consciousness can be transformed. And what he means by that is that by calling the quarters and casting the circle and doing all the things that you do to set up a circle, we've moved to a different way of being. And the more you do this, the more powerful that effect becomes. Um, the fact that people might be feeling nervous or vulnerable or otherwise um, changed increases participant sensitivity to stimuli. Now, many people have suggested that the reason that nudity can be um, a good thing is because it promotes feelings of equality in that perhaps we're all feeling equally vulnerable. Um, certainly if there's one person who's clothed and a bunch of other people who are naked, um, then actually the, the clothed person is more likely to feel vulnerable because they're the odd one out. And if conversely, if you've got a bunch of people who are clothed and one person who's naked, um, you know, the naked person would feel vulnerable. I think we've all had that scary dream where, you know, you stand up in front of a crowd and suddenly realize you have no clothes on. Um, it's terrifying. <laughs> Um, when I was a kid, uh, I used to dream that I'd accidentally gone to school in my pajamas, and um, and as an adult, it's turned into I went accidentally gone somewhere with nothing on and looked down and gone ah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so difference of power can be awkward. Um, however, uh, as Thorn Mooney points out in one of her videos on um, ritual nudity. Um, there are still markers of status, um, even when we're naked, um, because as she points out, you know, the reason celebrities are all completely ripped and um, slim and all the rest of it is because they have lots and lots of money to spend on spending all day, making sure that they are fit uh, and slim and all the rest of it. So good point. Um, so the feelings of equality thing may or may not be something that actually works. Um, I think the argument that consciousness is transformed by the feeling of otherness and difference is more likely. So in my book, Dark Mirror, the Inner Work of Witchcraft, I have a chapter on ritual nudity and um, I would certainly concur with Ronald Tusson that candlelight in, is magical. Um, the human body looks uniquely attractive in all its shapes, sizes and forms um, by candlelight or by firelight. Um, and I think that by being in a space which is not lit by electricity, but is lit by candlelight, um, it does change your consciousness to some extent. Um, and I think that by participating in Sky Club Ritual, it does create a radical acceptance of all shapes and sizes of body. Um, you know, you learn to see that 
the human body is attractive in all its shapes and sizes, then that we don't need to be uh, so hung up on being slim and ripped and all the rest of it. Um, so that said, obviously, the consent part is really, really important. Um, I think, you know, if if you're in a space and you have a fear that um, people are looking at you in a sexualized way or that you um, you don't you feel you've been pressured into um, getting your clothes off, um, then obviously you're not going to be comfortable and nobody wants that. Um, so you know if you join a group and that group wants you to go skyclad straight away before you've been initiated or had a chance to get to know them or whatever, then run a mile because that's not appropriate, you know. We should be only working skyclad in initiatory circles um, and in an atmosphere of perfect love and perfect trust. And perfect love and perfect trust is earned. It is not an automatic thing. And how you earn that is by practicing good consent culture and making sure everybody feels safe and having, you know, like, no, we're not going to be touching each other in inappropriate ways or. Um, I don't know, uh, sticking your tongue in someone's mouth when they didn't ask you to or whatever it happens to be. So, um, you know, this is really important. Um, and uh, also in the chapter on ritual nudity, I talk about the aura and the etheric body, um, not in the sense that clothes allegedly inhibit the aura and the etheric body, um, but more in the sense of how they relate to working in circle. Because um, I don't believe that, you know, the aura clearly penetrates through cloth, right? It's, it, it's a no brainer. Uh, so I think this idea that that was some of the early witchcraft writers put forward, where they said that, you know, the aura would be inhibited by cloth just seems a bit bizarre um and um so yeah i wouldn't worry about that um but yeah the the thing about working naked is that it's it's freeing i feel freer and i feel my, that my but i feel that radical acceptance of my body and the bodies of the other people there and the other thing that's great about it is that you know it's not a sexual thing so we're not kind of looking at each other and going oh, uh -huh. um it's all about that radical acceptance and and when you feel that your body is accepted um by other people it's so liberating this is just i, I can't stress that enough how liberating that is to go you know i am accepted as i am people aren't expecting me to be um you know slim and ripped and all the rest of it so i i just to me that is the most important thing actually um so i would also say as well as hey read my book because i've got a good chapter on ritual nudity in it amongst other things um i would also say go read go watch thorn rooney's video on ritual nudity because it's really good um and uh, like I said, you know, if you meet a group that wants you to work Skyclad straight away um, before you've even um, got initiated or got to know them, then that is a red flag and, you know, run. <laughs> and, um, you know, to people who are really, really keen on working Skyclad, um, you know, I think we have to be considerate of those who haven't ever been to a nudist event or a naturist event um and we have to be understanding of people's fears and hang-ups um and just you know take it slowly i mean obviously you might as well be upfront about the fact that your group is a skyclad group obviously because you know if people are absolutely adamant that they will never ever ever work skyclad then there's not much point in them jo joining your group um they might just want to go and find another another group. Um, 
But all, on the other hand, you know, if someone's kind of hesitant or um, isn't quite sure or just not quite comfortable, um, then, you know, I don't think a my way or the highway approach really helps. I think it's a case of just kind of reassuring them and, um, you know, trying to work through their fears and insecurities. Um, I mean, one thing that people who aren't sure could try is just kind of go to a naturist event and see how you get on. Um, Cause you know, there's some key similarities there. Um, so yeah. Uh, I think that's about what I had to say on the subject of ritual nudity. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below and uh, check out my books and have a nice day. Blessed be.